Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. Grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals. I go out and I go get it. How to code, that's all I know. I don't succeed, then I don't breathe. Success, what does it mean? If I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles, compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles, go take care of your business. Success Chronicles, it's deeper than just winning. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with a topic session uh, today. And today we have uh, Jennifer Whitaker. She's a trauma specialist and an empowerment strategist uh, doing some amazing things to make our world a better place. And I'm so glad to have her on this topic session. And this topic session we're going to talk about is tips to get through. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You know, we uh, I've interviewed her before and, you know, she's talked to me about some, some things that she's done and been blessed to do and help people. And I asked her to come on and just do a topic because, you know, none of us are immune from going through tough things in our life, you know. And so I figured that, you know, with your expert expertise, you'd have some amazing tips and techniques to share with the audience that we could all use to help us get through tough things in our life. Mm hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah. if you want to start, you can just go ahead and talk about some of those things that that you've experienced or things that, you know, you've worked with that have helped. Yeah, for sure. Um, so one thing, uh, first and foremost, um, whenever somebody is going through a really, really rough time in their life, whether it's um, the effects of a traumatic event or, you know, depression, suicidal ideation, anxiety, overwhelm, um, doesn't matter what it is. Um, there seems to be a general attitude of, oh, just snap out of it. Just, just get it together and just snap out of it. Just make a different choice. And it's not that simple as just making a different choice. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I would encourage is first and foremost is don't ask the person why questions. Don't ask somebody, why would you do that? Why would you do something like that? Because that is an, a personal attack on a belief system. It's BS. Uh, no, yeah, your BS. It, exactly. So approach it as what happened? What led to this? And it's not so, so much of an attack. It's, it's, so it's all about how you word the question and how you come across to people. And there's a reason for that because you can't think your way out of trauma when trauma settles into the nervous system because trauma is biologically based when it imprints in the nervous system. Um, and I've been explaining it a little bit differently. So I'm working on fleshing out a theory, <laughs> so I'm going to kind of talk through it. I haven't, and, and I'll be honest, Chip, I haven't fully formed this theory yet, um, but I'm working on it, and so I'm still kind of developing it, but if you'll allow me, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Let's go. So we have different parts to ourselves, so it really helps to understand yourself, understand the human mind and the human spirit, and we all have different parts and pieces to ourselves. So we have our physical body and our physical body has each cell in our body has the capacity. It's been estimated to store about six bytes of memory. So when you think that the average adult is somewhere around 50 to 100 trillion cells, depending on size. Um, I don't know who counted, by the way. I'm just taking their word for it. <laughs> but let's say, go right in the middle and say that the average adult has 75 trillion cells in the body. You multiply that times six bytes of information per cell. That's a tremendous amount of information that our bodies can hold. Well, the tissue memory, the cellular memory, and the memory of the body is called implicit memory or the implicit mind it learns very differently than our cognitive mind learns. So that's what I call our experiencer because that's what experiences life. That's our sensation and that's our emotion. So we, every single person on the planet has an experiencer if they're alive. Mm. Then we have our subconscious mind 
and our subconscious mind is our dreams and our visions and our, our hopes and what we envision for ourselves. So whenever somebody says, where do you see yourself in 10 years? That's where we go to is our, our subconscious mind and that visionary aspect of who we are. And dreams, um, dreams is a great way to think about the visionary that lives within because the visionary and the experiencer don't have language. They're not verbal. So the experiencer, um, like I said, is the language of sensation and emotion. The visionary is the language of images and pictures. So if you've ever had a dream, which I think most of us have, <laughs> and you've ever tried to explain your dream to somebody, have you ever done it accurately and adequately? Have you ever conveyed what really happened in the dream using words? Because I haven't. I've tried yeah. and I can't get there because there's no way, it, you know, it's like, well, I was in my house, but it wasn't my house or I was in my car, but it wasn't my car. Or it, it, there are these things that you just know because the visionary mind is again, is very different than the sensing and feeling mind. And then, so we have the experiencer and we have the visionary and then we have the narrator and everybody knows about the narrator because here in America, <laughs> Most people have over-identified with the narrator. The dit, 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 dit. And that's our belief system. That's our language. That's our words. And that's why it's so hard to put what we sense and feel and what we see into words. So the narrator, if you're always identifying with the narrator and that dit, 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 and well, I think this, and I think that, and dit, 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 um, you're probably a little bit out of balance. Um, so we need to work with some of the other parts as well. And then the fourth aspect that we all have and again, a, a majority of people don't realize that it's there is the observer. And the observer is like the rational, reasonable parent, not the abusive parent, but the rational, reasonable parent that lives inside that tries to keep the three kids in alignment. Hmm. And most people, again, forget that there's even an observer. So the observer is that voice that's in our head and it's usually really quiet and it usually just speaks some really small phrases and it'll be like, um, my son's 22 and this happened yesterday. I got, I got home last night from this class and I was just flipping exhausted and I snapped at him. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit snappish and, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I said, I wasn't going to do this again. I let my exhaustion, um, you know, overtake. take over. Yeah. I let my exhaustion overtake me. And, you know, it wasn't a big fight or anything, but he's like, what's wrong? He's, he's like, what's wrong with you, mom? And I'm like, you know, you're right. You're right. I, I do need to check myself. So it didn't end up in an argument, but that little voice in my head, I heard it. That little voice is going, Hey, Jen, I thought you said you weren't going to do this anymore. And there you go doing it again. Yeah. That normally, that normally happens in my family. When we hungry, we have a thing that we, that we yes. just say, yeah, he's, he's hungry. You know, she's right. hungry. You know. Right. But if you notice when you're hungry and you're, you're, you're off doing a behavior or you're right. saying things and you realize it inside your own head, mm -hmm. you'll hear that voice inside your own head going, Hey Chip, what are you doing? I thought you said you weren't going to act this way anymore. I thought you said you weren't going to get angry and, you know, slam the door like that again, again, or I thought you said you weren't going to whatever. And so that's the observer. And we really need to have our butt in the seat of the observer because that's where we have the most power and the most empowerment in our life because the observer is the one who witnesses what's going on with the experiencer, the visionary, and the narrator. And it really is. It's like when you're in the observer seat, it's like trying to get the kids in alignment. So if you've ever been around kids yeah. or puppies or <laughs> yeah. getting your ducks in a row. <laughs> Anything with trauma or behaviors. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So when somebody goes through a trauma, and when somebody's living through an experience of trauma, and trauma is not about the actual event um, in the context that I'm speaking right now. Trauma is what happens inside of you as a result of what happened to you. So trauma, um, just a really basic definition of how I'm using it, is anything that limits your future response to a similar situation. Mm -hmm. so, um, so for example, um, I think we've all had relationships that didn't end well, especially if you're in adulthood. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe there are a few lucky ones out there that, you know, met their sweetheart in high school and everything's been roses since. Um, right. I think that's rare. I think we've all had relationships go sour. And when we have relationships go sour, it is so easy to, to 
date somebody in a, in the future and say, Oh yeah, I've seen this before. You're just like he was, Ooh. or yeah, she's done this before. You're yeah. exactly like she was. It brings um, up a, a radar for you. Like, Ugh. exactly. So if that's your approach, then you've got trauma because that's limiting your response to a future event, which is that next person that you date. So you're not giving that person a chance. You're just automatically assuming that they're just like your ex and you're not really giving them a fair chance. You're jumping to a conclusion and you're latching on to a, the story you tell yourself. Brene Brown talks about the story you tell yourself all the time. Um, and it really does take a little bit of skill and practice to learn to get beyond the story you tell yourself to see the truth of the situation. Because if you can start to sort it out and ask yourself, okay, is this new guy I'm dating, is it true that he's just like everybody else I've dated in the past? Well, no, no it's yeah. not. So what's different about it? So going into some questions like, is it true? Is it really true? And this is where, um, if any of your listeners have ever heard of Byron Katie, um, Byron Katie has this program where she calls it the work. And it's really simple. Um, I highly recommend Byron Katie's The Work because it's just a simple uh, way to question yourself. Um, and if you have somebody in your life who has experienced trauma and they're going through a rough patch, don't encourage them to retell the story. Mm. Because the more they retell the story, the more that reinforces that unhealthy perception. Um, so, so for example, um, let's say that... Um, you've been in a car accident. And so you've got trauma about driving a car and you know, you're in your car. Let's say you were stopped at a red light and somebody slammed into you, shoved you into the intersection and you got hit again. Um, you know, could, things like that do happen. So um, let's say you've been in a car accident. So every time you go to a red light, you're afraid that somebody's gonna hit you from behind. You know, so there's a little bit of bracing there. If you're talking to somebody and you notice that they're having um, reactive responses, because a lot of times you will see people's patterns of behavior change after an event that imprints trauma in them. Um, don't ask them to tell what happened every little bit and part and piece of that car accident. Don't have them relive it because every time they retell the story of what happened and, oh my gosh, I was looking there and I saw this dump truck coming up behind me and I knew he wasn't going to stop and there was nothing I could do. You can hear the cadence start to speed up and you can hear the da -da 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 -da. you can hear the activation in their voice instead ask them how are you getting through this how how are you surviving this what's helping you to get through this and that changes the focus not from the tragedy not from it, it shifts it away from focusing on the details of the event to oh yeah you know what every time i come home it just really, really helps me to sit down on the sofa for about 10, 10 or 15 minutes and just play with my dog and pet my dog. Wow, that must really be a resource for you. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me what that feels like. Um, so if I'm working with somebody, that's what I would say is tell me what that feels like. What does it feel like when your dog's on your lap, when you're petting your dog or whatever that resource is, because it's going to be different for each person. Um, so focus on what's helping them get through rather than... Um, telling, retelling the details of what happened to them. And that can be a huge resource that can shift things more quickly than you'd ever imagine. And if you can get them to explain how that resource feels as they're telling you how it feels when they're playing with their dog, they're re-experiencing those feelings. So you're reinforcing those resourceful feel good feelings in their body without having them relive the trauma of the event that happened to them. It's good stuff. Yeah. All, all good tips to help one mm -hmm. get through. I think, <clears throat> you know, the type, you know, how you mentioned the four experience of visionary narrator observer. Mm -hmm. When you, when you know what the type is, I think it helps you mm -hmm. approach it and helps you see how to get through that. And then I love the whole shift, your focus, mm -hmm. you know, from going from, okay, let's not, you know, rely on that anymore. Let's do what we have to do to move on. Mm -hmm. and learn from it and get better. I love that. So those right. are some great tips to help mm -hmm. us get through. And if you don't mind, before we get off, if, uh, sharing mm -hmm. with the audience, mm -hmm. they can go follow you and check you out and show you some love with what you have going on. Oh, absolutely. Um, the easiest way to find me is on my website, which is jenniferwhitaker.com. And um, 
I'm also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, on I'm Jennifer Whitaker on Facebook, Jennifer Whitaker Gardner on LinkedIn. Um, and um, oh my gosh, I forget. I think I'm yes and JW on on Twitter. I need to go look that up. I forget my Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, I'm on Twitter. And um, I don't know, like I get, I get stressed by the socials. <laughs> They're not my favorite place to spend. <coughs> I go to the socials to do absolutely what I have to do. And then I hate, hightail it out of there because I find yeah. the socials stressful. Yeah, it, so causes, I, it causes you some trauma, huh? It does. I don't hey. spend too much time like anymore stewing and that stuff that brings up you know, like my anxiety and stress. That's I'm like, I don't, I don't need to do that. <laughs> there you go. You just have to shift your focus, huh? Get yeah. on the website or something. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. The, my <laughs> website, jenniferwhitaker.com is the easiest because that's where you'll get information about my empowerment strategy program. Mm -hmm. You'll get information about my podcast, which is called Yes And with Jennifer Whitaker. Um, and I'm, I'm making some more exciting changes to my podcasts and those are going to roll out hopefully later this week where my show um, as of this week will be available to watch, listen, or read because there are going to be blog posts that pretty much cover the entirety of the conversation. That's awesome. Well, yeah. good luck with the things <laughs> that you have going on. And I want to say again, thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge and wisdom with the Success Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Chip. Well, there it is. You're welcome. <laughs> Tips to get through. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it. Go get it.